Hi and welcome back to the sanctuary and oh my goodness I'm so sorry about this the live that um, didn't go quite to plan Mercury retrograde showed its ugly head and um, it just got really difficult trying to bring Kaylee onto a live and we just couldn't seem to do it together she couldn't find a way to bring me on I couldn't find a way to bring her on but whatever, Kaylee saved the day and she did an absolutely beautiful video, um, a wonderful live all about money and, and the gratitude of money. And so many inspirational thoughts came through my mind as well, listening to her. And she has such a beautiful energy with such a wonderful smile. So thank you so much, Kaylee, for saving the day. And I do hope at some point um, that I'll be able to invite her back on and we'll be able to have a proper q a session with her i might even do it via zoom and then put it in in through youtube so yeah that was quite an eventful moment and what a day it's been a very very powerful one um especially for me i don't know about for you but money for me is has been a major issue um, for a lot of my life I'm actually loading up two videos, one on gratitude and one on letting go. Mercury retrograde <laughs> is also making internet incredibly slow and it's taken me already five hours just to load up 30% of the videos. But when they're ready, they will be uploaded. Um, and th there's just so much to say on this subject. There really is because I think with money, I lived it so strongly for for so much of my life, and I learned so much through it. It took me on so many deep dives into who I was, what life was, what energy is, um, so much that I'm so incredibly grateful for that journey that it did take me on, however painful that was for me. And. As I, I talked about at the beginning of today, that the status I shared, that that moment really started in, in this life. Um, in my early 20s when I was a student and I was given the student grant to go off and live my life. And it sent me off into a spiral of debt because I didn't know how to handle money. I'd never had that much money. We'd always had this, this feeling of scarcity um, within my family upbringing. And so having this amount of money was just like a, a party time, really. I didn't go mad having mass and spending sprees. It was just a day-to-day -day living. And obviously with students going out for a few drinks. And yeah, you know, splashing out time to time on buying clothes, etc. And all the rest of it that goes with being a student. But it sent me off into a whole spiral of debt. And um, my boyfriend at that time, who later on became to be the father of my children, found out about my debt a year later and actually told my parents behind my back about my debt. And so my parents confronted me about it. And the shame and the guilt that went with that was just awful. It really, it was an horrendous moment. And they offered to to pay me out of the debt as long as I paid them off so for a few years after that I was paying my parents back to help me with the debt but that then left with so much guilt and shame about receiving receiving help and I think that stayed with me for for a lot all the way through so that when um at the end of my divorce um, with the same person, I then again spiraled into debt. And that was because of the job that I was in, that I was only paid for the hours I worked. And sometimes, often in August and January and May, there was no work coming in. And so I didn't have a salary. And that sent me off again into a huge spiral of debt. And it was that one, you know, that the first time as a student was the experience, the second time is the lesson. And in that one, that's when I really went into a lot of self-discovery um, 
And, you know, I went to have coaching, I went to try EFT, I had hypnosis, um, Chinese um, stomach massage, there was all sorts. I tried every alley down to try and help me through this situation that was happening. And there was days, while well, I didn't know whether this five euros could be spent to feed my children, to feed me, or to feed my cats. And that's how bad it was. And there was a moment in that time when I remember laying on the floor crying my eyes out, thinking, what do I do if, you know, what's gonna happen if I lose my house, if I can't pay for my house for the rent? And so I really went into this worry and this fear. And think, okay, if I lose my house, what will happen? Well, the children will go to the dad. I will surely find somewhere to live. Some friend will put me up until I can find me on the back of my feet. Well, what is there to worry about? And that was a huge moment for me to realize that worry, anxiety didn't serve me. And that if I could just drop those, it would really help me to see forwards. And that was a major stepping stone in, in coming out of the spiral in debt. And I'll talk about this more in depth tomorrow about the worry and the, and the anxiety. And the other thing was about letting go. That, and again, I'm loading up a video about this, but I got to a point where I was just so fed up of endlessly being in this debt and hitting my head against a brick wall that I just stopped the car and I shouted the divine, help me, I can't take this anymore, help me. And they showed me a video of um, an image of a bicycle of saying, let go of the handlebars. You're wanting to go left and we want you to go right. And by this way, you're actually falling off. And so um, that was such a powerful image for me that I was actually going against what the divine wanted for me. So I just gave up complete control. They told me to pedal. They told me just to put in the energy and move forwards and do what I needed to do. And they will look after the rest. And oh my goodness, that changed my life. It changed the whole way I looked at everything. And so from that moment on, I gave up um, trying to control the situation. And then the other major lesson I learned was about gratitude. And um, Kaylee talks about this in her live video as well about gratitude. There was a moment when um, I went to get in my car to go for work and the car didn't start and I didn't have the money to pay for repairs and that sent me off into anxiety, into panic, into anger, thinking, oh my God, I've got to get to work. I can't afford to, to have my car repaired. What am I going to do? I was fuming. But anyway, I thought, okay, I will go and catch the bus to work and the tram. And so... I decided on the way on walking to the bus stop that for every step I took, I would say a word of gratitude. I would give thanks for something in my life. And that journey, it started on of being, as I said, so full of worry, anxiety and anger. And with every step I took, I would say, you know, thank you for the house I'm living in. Thank you for my beautiful children. Thank you that it's not raining today. Thank you that there is a bus service. And by the time I got to the bus stop, which was only about 10 minutes later, I was on an absolute high. I was almost dancing. I was just so full of absolute joy. And it was then that I realized how gratitude can change our whole um vibration and energy we just we just come to a completely different place and so gratitude is immensely important in in all of our lives and again i'm loading up a video about this and i do <laughs> hope that it speeds up because it's such an important video but gratitude is important because it helps us focus on where we want to go it focuses on what is working now, in our life, there is everything there. If you imagine that everything in your, your life exists right in front of you. And we can either focus on one thing or another. And it's kind of like this kind of feeling. And if you are in gratitude, if you're really focused on the gratitude, everything that's working is going to come to the forefront 
and everything that's not is going to go back. Now this doesn't mean it's not here because it still is, but it's in the background and what's more important is what work is what is working. In the opposite way, if you're going to spend a lot of time complaining, what's not working, um, bloody hell the weather, the internet, whatever it is, if you're then focusing on what isn't working, this is going to happen and you're going to be seeing more of what isn't working. It's a simple focus of where we're going on. And so gratitude really helps you to shift your focus and you start saying, okay, it's working over here. I can see this. This is where I need to be heading. And it's, it's the same um, in, in every single way of, of whatever we're doing in life. If we're focusing on one thing, it's stopping us from seeing everything else. And a simple exercise with this on, on where the focus lies is this, if you're driving, for example, and you start saying to yourself, okay, I'm going to focus on blue cars today, you will see more and more blue cars. And it's incredible how this happens. It, it, you just start seeing them everywhere. I can actually do an exercise right now for you. If um, you're going to look around your room, you're going to just quickly skate around and you're going to notice everything that is the color green in your room. So do it now, have a look and see everything is green. So I can see a green plant, I can see a green lid on Tupperware, I can see the green flowers in a mug, I can see a green spray. I can see a green, um, a green uh, cover. Now, come back to me. And now I want you to directly tell me now what you can, your perception is projection, yes. And then tell me what you saw in your room that was red. And I bet you didn't notice. You can tell me what was green, but you can't tell me what was red. And so it's just that green, that red is there. Everything is there. Nothing has changed. But what you're seeing is what you're focusing on. And I think this is the same thing with money. If you're focusing on debt, oh my God, I don't have enough. How am I going to pay these bills? What do I do if I don't have the money, the money that's coming in? All you're seeing is everywhere where the money isn't coming in. And so in those moments when I went through that horrendous debt, what I started doing was I had a little list on my fridge and I started to write all the money that was coming in. And that could have been a penny that I found on the floor. I would write, thank you for the penny that I found on the floor. If somebody offered me a free treatment that was worth, I don't know, 50 euros, thank you for the 50 euros treatment. And so I would start to write down all the places where the money was coming in. And not only did that change my focus and seeing what was coming in, but how positive is that? That every time I walk by that fridge, I could see this list growing of all this money coming in, thinking, wow, there is so much abundance around me. And so it, it's absolutely huge when you start changing your focus. And going back to gratitude as i said when i was doing those steps walking to the bus and giving gratitude kaylee you were talking about you only receive what you focus on the exception of everything else exactly this this is this perception that's going on here um you were talking about gratitude kaylee and you know we hear about doing a gratitude journal so some people will take a gratitude journal and they will just write i am thankful for i am thankful for i am thankful for there's no energy in that. That's like if you give somebody a present and they say, oh, thank you, and walk off. How does that make you feel? It makes you feel like, did they really appreciate that? You know, was it, was it worth me giving them their present? But when you're doing your gratitude journal, if you take the time to say, you know, I'm really thankful for this house I'm living in and feel it. If you imagine your life without that house, that's when you really feel that, that sense of gratitude. How would my life be without that? This chair I'm sitting on, if I didn't have this chair, where would I be sitting? I'd be sitting on the floor. And so you start to see that this real feeling of absolute gratitude. You feel into it and think, okay, I'm so grateful right now that, my goodness, I, I can breathe. I can breathe. How amazing is that? 
And when you really get into that zone of absolute pure gratitude for what you have, the vibration changes and it lifts your vibration. So when you're doing a gratitude journal, you can write in just, you know, five things you were grateful for for that day at the end of the day. But you can also do it at the start of the day. I'm so grateful for the opportunities coming my way. I'm so grateful for the, for the abundance that's flowing in. And start setting that intention for the day coming forwards. And Kaylee, you're so right. You know, the, the, the emotion and the energy of, of money is gratitude. It's really being thankful for the, the money. You know, even when we're paying out bills, I'm so thankful that I have the money that I can pay that bill. That's amazing. I have electricity. I can pay for that, you know? And it's, it's this whole thing. It's this money exchange of, of give and take. And I wrote down, um, just before I came on this live, or I was about to write down, yeah, that there's so much I can say. I've done a video, Joyce, um, about gratitude. It's so, so powerful. Um, I'll come back to the, Joyce, you've just mentioned about those. Another idea for a gratitude journal is that um, I create a little gratitude jar. And with my daughters at the end of their school day, just going back a few years, at the end of the day when we had our meal together, we would sit down and talk about our day. And then each of us would write down something we were thankful for that day on a piece of paper and pop it in the gratitude jar. And when that jar was full, we would then take out those pieces of paper and relive those moments. And it was so beautiful. And you actually see that jar filling up. There's a, I think there's something so important of making everything visual and fun and touchable and tangible. If you can see your jar filling up, if you can see the gratitude that you're giving, you can feel that within your heart. You can see it on the list that's growing on, on your fridge. All these things really help you to change your focus. And the more you change your focus, the more that will come in towards you. Now it's very, um, yeah, it was, it was so beautiful, Julie, because it helped them as well to change their focus and just to think, okay, I oh, know, mummy, I had a really awful day today, okay? So maybe there was just one little moment that was good. What was that one little moment? And it helped them as well to focus on what was going right in their life. And, you know, it's, it's so simply powerful. And I think gratitude is the absolute thing to do. If it's the one thing you can do, it's this. It's really is gratitude, whether it's a journal, whether it's a jar, whether it's writing a list, whether it's saying it. Um, Wayne Dyer, he said that every, bless him, his soul, beautiful soul, every step he took in the morning, when he got up first thing in the morning and to go to the bathroom, Every step he took, he would give a word of gratitude. I've done it when I go blackberry picking. Every time I pick a blackberry, I say thank you for something. And honestly, try it. When you start doing with gratitude, oh my goodness, it just shifts your vibration so much. And when you're in this higher state of vibration, you're more in this, this area, this, um, this zone, where you can actually start to receive more. So much I can say on that as well. Um, and then, um, you know, it's the energy we give to money. Now it's interesting, um, Kaylee as well, you know, talk about receiving. I realized while writing, um, my status of just before on Facebook that during the motion code session, I was given the vision of a life I had as a prostitute. It was an awful scene. I was on the floor in a ball. I'd been beaten up um, because I was useless. And then I had the whole energy that I was some kind of prostitute in this life, in that life. And then it came to me, oh my God, every time I received money in that life, I was receiving it for something that was dirty, that was giving pleasure to other people where I was being forgotten. And there's a whole negative energy around it. And so I began to see, and I've just begun to see, why it was so difficult for me to receive money. That when I went through um, the student debt, when my parents gave me that money or the guilt that was behind it, when I just finished this cycle and somebody helped me to pay, 
for that last part of the, of the money, the very last part of the debt. Again, it was a shame of asking for that money. It's so huge how this plays out in this life and how it's connected to other lives as well. It is an absolute massive subject. I think I could actually just, just talk. Um, Kaylee actually made me realize as well just how much there is around money and how much I think I've learned for sure on, on the path that, um, that I went through with it. But yeah, for sure, gratitude is, if there's one thing you're gonna do to help you out of where you are, it's gratitude and that counts through absolutely everything. And speaking of gratitude, there is an oil for that. <laughs> There's an all for everything. And um, Kaylee, you, you were talking about um, that how those beliefs are in our nervous system, they're within our nerves. And within the brain, we have something called the limbic system. And the limbic system is where all these beliefs are stored. Every time we hear something like, you know, money is scarce, money is dangerous, and people who have money are, are, are bad people, all these start thoughts start creating this, this neuron pathway for the, the nerves to form. And then these actually literally almost become set in stone. Now the limbic system um, is right next to the olfactory bulb, which is where the oils are breathed in, where we breathe in fragrance. And um, aroma is what helps to anchor in your memory. If you, um, if you watch another video, that the first sign of Alzheimer's is the, the, the loss of smell, and that is because it's connected to memory. And so when you're doing your affirmations, you can actually strengthen those affirmations and really anchor them. To, to me, it's like anchoring a belief of a balloon with a weight of the essential oil. And so it's finding the oils that work with your affirmations and using those during your moment when you're doing them, when you're doing the affirmations. And so the oil of gratitude is spikenard which is a really, it's quite an unusual smell. It's quite earthy, quite sweet. It's a very pleasant smell. It's quite resinous as well. And so I just want to read you a little bit about Spikenhard. So Spikenhard encourages true appreciation of life. It addresses patterns of ingratitude where individuals see themselves as target of bad luck or victims of their life circumstances. This perception can often lead to feelings of blame and anger. Spike and I'd encourage, I've actually got tears coming up here, so I know this is triggering me deep within me. Spike and Ard encourages the soul to surrender and accept life exactly as it is. It invites individuals to let go and find appreciation for all of life's experiences. By opening the soul to acceptance and gratitude, Spike and Ard assists individuals in seeing a deeper meaning in their lives. It supports them in feeling joy and happiness for other people as well as for themselves. It invites individuals to expand by fully letting go of resistance, anger and blame. And that's also blame and resistance against yourself as well. Because everything is just a reflection of what's going on on the outside, it's what is within. Um, gratitude is an expression of complete acceptance and abundance. A grateful person is content with what they have. Spike and our teachers individuals to be grateful for their challenges as well as their blessings. It also assists individuals in transcending their sorrows through being grateful for their present life circumstances. Through complete surrender and acceptance, the soul may be brought into peace and harmony. And this goes with what I was saying about when I was shown the image of letting go of the handlebars. That when we're in the, these moments of difficulty, we want to grip those handlebars. We're so frightened, like, oh my God, I've just got to control this. I've got to control this bicycle. And the divine told me, the divine told me to let go of the handlebars because I was trying to go left and they were steering me right. And it's when we're in the, these moments of difficulty that we think we need to go left to help us. But what we're not seeing is what the divine is trying to, to bring to us during these moments and they're trying to guide us right. And if, if, if you've ever been on a bicycle where you're fighting over somebody trying to steer the handlebars, one's going left, one's going right, you're actually going to fall off. And so the divine told me just to pedal, just keep going, do what you're doing, do it with joy, do it with happiness, keep moving forwards and we'll take care of the handlebars. And it was that moment where everything really changed. And I think this is when we're going through these moments and people, you know, we've talked about debt on here and money issues, whatever you're going through, 
it's looking to where you're actually being guided and not thinking that you need to be going this way, you need to be going that way. What is absolutely in this moment present that you can learn from it? Because it's, and especially with money, it's never about the money, it's what it's teaching you. It's the energy that's running through it. Because money is just a piece of paper. <laughs> There's nothing, we, we, we're the ones that give it. You know, we could print off some piece of paper, we could put some little squares and, and write a little dollar sign on it, whatever. And then we're the ones that actually imprint that that's money with the energy that we intend to give it. And so the other oil that comes to mind is the oil of abundance, which is wild orange, which is just heaven. It, for, for us English amongst us, it reminds me of Terry's chocolate orange. <laughs> Absolutely delicious. I could actually drink this bottle. And it's really funny because my bottle's actually almost empty right now. But when you have wild orange and when you pour it out, it absolutely gushes out of the bottle. It just wants to give you all this abundance in the oil. And so the other one, and the, you know, it, it, it's so true what people say. Um, I'm just going to find it in my book. That abundance is, is everywhere. If you're feeling that there's scarcity, look around you and see where the abundance is. Even if it's raining, look at the abundance of rain. Look at the abundance of flowers, the abundance of leaves. You know, in nature, it's, it's, it's the one where I always turn to for, for um, inspiration. There's abundance everywhere in nature. And so Wild Orange addresses a wide variety of emotional issues. It inspires abundance, fosters creativity, and supports a positive mood. What also come into mind there with the creativity is that orange is the color of the sacral chakra. And it's from the sacral chakra where we're actually creating, where we're bringing forth. And so there can be this feeling if the, um, what's coming to mind with that sacral chakra being closed, the creativity closes. And so does it this, again, this feeling of, of crisping, crisping on. Because somewhere um, within, within that scarcity is also coming from the root chakra which is there absolutely to survive. And it's either energy is blocked within the root chakra because it's not able to move up to the sacral where it's able to, to move forward with, with passion and with creativity and flow into the life. And so it's also working through the, the sacral chakra as well for creating this, creating abundance and being creative in life. Wild orange also reconnects individuals with their inner child and brings spontaneity, fun, joy and playfulness into one's life. And it's just this feeling of like, oh, I can let go, I can I can just have fun now, you know, I don't have to, to hold on because, you know, that because of just needing to survive, I can actually be this inner child, I can love it. At its core, wild orange teaches the true meaning of abundance. It encourages individuals to let go of scarcity mindset with all of its manifestations, including fear, nervousness, inflexibility, workaholism, lack of humour, and the belief that there is not enough. Wild Orange reminds the soul of the limitless supply found in nature, as I've just said. Fruit trees, like the orange tree, give freely to all in need. This oil teaches individuals to give without thought of compensation. In nature, there is always enough to go around. Wild Orange encourages individuals to let go of their need to hoard, which is the epitome of scarcity. Wild Orange also insists an individual's nature, natural creative sense. It inspires limitless solutions for problems and issues. One never needs to live in fear. Wild Orange invites individuals to completely let go as a child does and live from their true self. At a person's core, there is abundance, sharing, playing, relaxing and enjoying the boundless life these are the gifts bestowed by the wild orange oil. And this all comes to mind as well about breathing, about air. Um, yes, I was going to say that as well, Julie, that um, spike and heart that Mary put on Jesus' feet, Mary Magdalene, she bathed um, Jesus' feet with this oil. Exactly, it's, it's a really absolutely special oil. It's incredible. Um, and so... What was I just saying? Um, breathing. When, when we first wake up in the morning and we open the doors to the outside world, we don't suddenly, sort of, oh, can't breathe, there might not be any more breath, there might not be any more air, this could be my last breath, I need to hold on to it. 
And this is the exact feeling of what happened. I've so been there with scarcity, like, oh my God, I can't, I can't spend this. I can't, you know, I've got to hold on to this money. My, more money might not come in. And so it's also getting this mindset of breathing that as we breathe, just as, as Kay, um, Kaylee was saying as well, it's this circular of energy that if we hold on to that money, we're actually holding on to our breath. And how does that feel? You know, and it's allowing that breath to go and, and to breathe through it and to breathe out as the same way as allowing that, that, that money to, to flow through. Which also comes to mind as well about receiving money. If somebody gives us money and gives us money and we say, no, 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 I, I can't accept that. No, no, no. That's actually stopping the flow of money and the flow of energy. That person was in joy to give you that money. They wanted to give you that money because they wanted to help you. It was through love and through joy. And if you refuse that money, that actually blocks that energy of love and joy back into that person. It cannot move forward. If you imagine this as a circle of people and you know, almost like pass the parcel, we're gonna pass this money around. And it's going from person to person, here's the money, here's the money. And this person says, thank you, I'll pass it on. And then one person says, I can't accept it. What happens in that moment? It's um, it, stopping the flow of money. That, that, that then cannot stop. You're actually stopping that flow going to the next person. And so it flows around. And this also brings to mind as well another situation that I lived in when, again, in this debt situation, I was standing at the tram stop and I was going to get a tram ticket. And this woman next to me begged me for some money. Please can I have some money? And I said, no. I just looked away. I thought, how dare she beg me? And I looked to my purse thinking, hang on a minute. I've got some money in here. I've got more money than she probably has. And it wasn't a lot. I probably had, I don't know, five euros in my purse. I thought, don't be stupid, Nikki. Give her that two euros. So I gave her some money for the tram ticket. I gave her two euros. And when I got on the tram, I was about to get on the tram. And this person came off the tram and said, here you are, have my ticket. There's an hour left, an hour left on my ticket. And it was like, oh <laughs> there's a lesson for me if i give i receive as well and even if we're not coming from this mindset i'll only give so i can receive but it actually showed that this circle of they were showing me how this energy works if i give to somebody else that's creating this flow and this person will give me this this, this um this tram ticket then i can use and so from then on i started giving my tram tickets away every time if I hadn't used, I'd only used 10 minutes of my ticket, it was valid for two hours, I would get off the tram and give it to somebody. The, the same at supermarkets. When I received the little tickets, like in France, I have these little stickers that you save up to, to I don't know, to, to gain a prize or something. I, I take the tickets, but then I give them to somebody else. I don't need them, but I give them to somebody else because they will, they will want it. And it's so incredible to see people's faces light up when I give them five little stickers. Do you want these? Oh, thank you so much. It, it's so beautiful. And I think this is where the gratitude is coming in, of gratitude of receiving those stickers. Even if I don't want them, somebody else will, and it's passing it on. Again, I could talk for hours on this subject. No wonder I felt so wonderful when I lived next to the orange groves. Julie, that must have been absolute heaven. And I still find it strange to see oranges on trees. <laughs> You know, we're so used to seeing them in the supermarkets, we don't realise that they actually grow on trees in, in, in other countries. Um, yeah, the, the, there's a lot we can, we can talk about on this, on this subject. Um, and it's, it's just so, so powerful. And um, yeah, it's, it's when we really take a stance and in this present moment of taking a distance from if you're, if you're going through debt or you have these money issues, take a moment and just see what energetics is really playing out. Where is this also showing up in your life? 
that's reflecting. I just need to get over the fact that I don't think I deserve to have money. This is a huge one. It's massive. Um, and it's also seeing, Julie, where else don't you think you deserve to have something? It could be, I don't deserve to have love. And I know I think that was a big one of mine. Um, I don't deserve to receive in general. What What is money meaning for you? And when we can actually journal about this, um, you can actually journal, okay, is it true that I don't deserve to have money? And then start to journal through it. And if you go beyond three pages, you actually start to dig really deep into your soul and things start to come out. Um, there's a there's a lot we can we can play around um, not deserving. It can also go into past lives as well. And this is why, you know, I say about with the emotion code that I've I've offered this discount for everybody in the group. Because with an emotion code session, we can actually work on that. So, for example, in the emotion code session, I will be asking, okay, does Julia have any trapped emotions that's making her give this feeling that she doesn't deserve to have money? And then I would go on and do the work to find these trapped emotions and release them. But these trapped emotions I'm now finding go all the way back to other lives, past, parallel, whatever you want to call them. I'm actually given um, the image of a moment when that feeling of not deserving money started and it often goes back to another life. We then work on the emotions, I release them and it actually releases that feeling of not deserving money. It, the whole energy around it changes. It's so powerful. I've seen it time and time again. And what I've also seen during the emotion code sessions is that it's not actually about the money. When we really start delving, I get also given where this might be playing out else in your life. And as I said, you know, it's not always about the money. It could be something else in your life where you're feeling you're not deserving, not deserving affection, um, not deserving to be valued. There's, there's so many other ways that it can actually show up. Um, and as I said, through, through emotion code, we can actually go back and I, I actually get given the moment when that actually started and it goes far beyond this life. And, you know, we're also dealing with um, inherited emotions as well, inherited beliefs of what we heard when we're a child, of ancestral beliefs coming through. And I think right now in this lifetime, we're also here to release so much about money um, from other generations, from our ancestors. We're at a pivotal change of the planet in every single way and we all know how the money system just does not work there's so much to be said about that and i think a lot is coming up to release this for so much more than just ourselves i think when i'm doing the emotion code sessions we're actually releasing for all generations for all the way back it's it's really really powerful times um and it's so funny about deserving because it's like the other day, people say I don't deserve to be happy. And this is a big one coming up as well. And I'm pretty well sure there's some past life stuff going off of that we've we've been punished for, for having money in, in many, many ways. Cara, struggle is my theme around money and weight. I didn't realise the connection until now. Although I don't want to struggle with either of them. Whoops, my camera's just gone funny. Struggle is where I feel comfortable. I think I need to find something else to focus on so I can literally let those struggles go. And that's so interesting because the moments when I got into debt, the moments when it was really hard for me, was when I would be my most creative. It's when I would find all these ideas coming through. And I actually began to think, well, hang on a minute. Am I actually hanging on to the story of going into these difficult moments because I know that's where I'm going to get these creative ideas. And so I felt like I was almost creating these moments just so I can get to the point where I had no money and then get really creative. And so struggle as well, Cara. And again, you've had emotion code with me and we can really see the correlations. 
yeah struggling around weight and it's also you know with the weight as I was saying about yesterday what's behind the weight there's probably a huge yes push to be creative exactly it's in these moments that we, it's like we're, we're pushed against the wall and that's where we find every creative juice possible and again this is coming back from the sacral and um again with the money and the weight i'm pretty sure there's something even uh, even further back than that i think the weight could be the physical manifestation of what's going on energetically with the money i think there's an even bigger connection it feels like a triangle that you have these two you have the weight and the money here but the two of them are connecting to something even more at the top um yeah struggling is where i feel comfortable and this is so interesting because this also keeps us in the comfort zone if i can struggle i can feel comfortable if i'm stepping out of that um, if I'm no longer struggling, I'm out of my comfort zone. Now, that's a really weird place to be. So, so get that, Cara. <laughs> so, honestly, when, when you start scratching the surface, there's so much more than than what we want to see. And, um, yeah, it definitely feels like that, that there's something behind those two that once we work on that, we'll actually find and it'll actually release from the two of them. Um, but that does feel like a physical way that it's manifesting through. Oh, wow, what a subject, you know, and it's really weird because um, Cara, again, um, Kaylee was also again saying um, that changes ickiness around money. And it's so funny that um, I really never liked the, the feeling of money, but here I am feeling so passionate about it because there's so much around it we can we can talk about. Everything is so interconnected, Julie. It it really is, in, in every way possible, um, and everything is just a reflection of really what's going on going on within us. Um, fascinating, fascinating subject, and I just hope that these videos that I've been doing on YouTube <laughs> that they will finally be uploaded. I can put them onto the group because. Um, I go a little bit more into depth about the gratitude and, and the letting go, etc. Um, I'm just thinking that if there's anything more to add on to this subject about it. It's a very, very powerful one. And um, once again, carry your words. I don't want to struggle with either of them. It's changing these words that we're using. So I want to be at ease. I want to feel relaxed around the, these two. Because every time we're saying, I don't want to struggle, your brain doesn't understand negative. So it'll just say, I want to struggle. So again, it's being careful with the words you use. And to start, you know, I want to, to, to let go and I want to change in the word around it. I want to feel easy with the money. Switch it to the positive way. Uh, and think about, I don't deserve. There's something and I put in a group about um, Byron Katie and she does a thing called The Work. And you basically start with a sentence like, I don't deserve money. And then you ask, is this true that I don't deserve money? Yes, it is. Is it absolutely true? Hmm, not sure. And then you start switching it round. I do deserve money. Does that feel right? I don't deserve money. Money deserves me. And you start switching it. And I've put that to worksheets and her website where everything is free. She gives everything away on that website. She's an incredible woman. And you actually see how twisting around the different sentences, it helps you to see something from a totally different perspective. And it's really interesting. It really helps to open your mind of just how you've been thinking about things and how there is another way of looking at it. But yeah, Cara, very interesting that the words we use, it's massive. Because you know the word to spell, it's like we're casting spells. And the word abracadabra is actually to, to actually to, to speak out the spell. So be careful the words you use around it. Wow, what a subject. I could, I could literally talk all day on this. <laughs> and I didn't think I would be able to with, you know, with money. It's like I was such a, oh, as, as um, Kaylee actually said, it was an icky subject. And it was so lovely how um, Kaylee said as well about 
um, going to see a wedding couple and how that everybody there is so happy to I don't know if you've actually seen the video Cara I know you're on there um, but how I walk into a room where everybody's so happy to be there but you're not and then seeing those people as you know as pound notes as dollar notes nobody wants to talk to you and that is such a thing the energy we have around money if that energy is very negative and very low vibration then we're not going to be it's not going to be attracting us we're not going to be able to attract in the money because it's on a different vibration it's just not on the same and so again it's raising our vibration which comes into the gratitude over money Whew, wow i'm almost spoken out i think <laughs> so much to say um and again what is happening as well is with the money we're coming over in tomorrow about the fear and anxiety and worry and i learned so much about fear anxiety and worry and how to let go of that through the journey um through debt and it taught me a lot how they just do not serve us at all and i'll be really talking into debt into debt <laughs> oh be careful my words in depth about those emotions and how I learned through the, the money aspect about letting go of worry. Worry is like a rocking chair. You know, lots of movement, lots of um, energy being put in, but we're not actually getting anywhere. And I really saw that once I let go of worry and anxiety and fear, everything suddenly lifted and I began to see opportunities. Thank you too, for, yeah, Julia. I think it's a huge subject for everyone um that these subjects that i chose for this week were the ones i know that were very strong for me but i also knew that so many people it touches so many people in so many ways and we don't have to be in debt about this you know we don't have to be in, in major trouble we can just be connecting how we're actually feeling about money and it can actually bring about value that there's you know we can exchange money for value how we we value ourselves because that's also really what it's about as well and for me, um, asking for payment for my services, for what I do, I began to realise it was somebody who helped me to see this, that I was actually um, thinking more about how they were seeing me, what value they were putting on me, rather than the money I put on myself, the value I put on myself. And again, this goes back to this other life I had that the money I was receiving was purely dependent on the value they were giving me through it. And so if I didn't believe I valued myself, if I didn't value what, what who I was, then I didn't believe they did either, so they weren't gonna be paying me a lot. So it's it's a com it's a, such a complex subject. We can look from every every other way possible. But it's so interesting, as I say, that when you sit down and really think about where money is like Cara like you just said um, it really helps us to see that there's something else behind these little pieces of paper that we call money anyway I'm going to go because um, my voice is about to go and I feel really dry in the mouth I've talked so much and I'm just so glad that finally Kaylee managed to get online and to do a live because that was so frustrating not be able to do it together and that finally, you know, I'm here and doing this live as well. So thank you so much for being here. And again, for the, on this live and also in the group. Thank you, Cara. I really, really appreciate this. Um, and I have a feeling I might actually continue this group beyond what it's an event. I might actually continue it so much longer than, than, than one week because there's just so much to say about everything. And I'm just loving all your company. So thank you so much. Have an absolutely beautiful day wherever you are, whether it's the morning, afternoon, evening, make it be a beautiful day and with absolute gratitude for your presence. Thank you very much. Take care. Oops, <laughs> my camera's slipping as well. <laughs> yeah, I really think so, Karen. Yeah, you dear, it's lovely to see you just before I say goodbye. Yeah, I think Cara, um, a week has just given me that this impetus to carry on because there is so much to say on the subject and yeah, I think it will go far beyond a week. It's wonderful to you, dear, to see you. Um, I've just finished the live. 
we've been on probably for about an hour now. So I shall see you on the next one. It'll be at the same time again tomorrow. And we'll be talking about worry, anxiety and fear. Another huge subject. And then Friday, I've got something really special, which is completely different. And it's so much more positive. So have a wonderful day, everybody. And take care. Goodbye.